There may not be a Halloween event this year, but DW is still passing out treats. Howdy everyone, Soberoni of GNA Reviews here, with a servant spotlight for the galaxy's cutest cheerleader, Calamity Jane. We'll be examining her stats and skills, as well as going over pointers to how you utilize her effectively and an overall grade, comparing her to how she stacks up to the other 4 star servants. So if you're ready to cheer on this cowgirl, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and ring my bell so that you can catch all of my spotlight videos as they go up and you can help out the channel. But for now, on to Jane's stats. Calamity Jane has a max HP of 12,495 and a max attack of 8,996, which becomes 8,517 due to her Archer class modifier. Jane actually has the highest HP of all of her 4 star Archer counterparts. However, to make up for it, she does also have one of the lowest attack stats in her class. This trend holds true outside of the Archer class as well. Her HP stat is well above the average for a 4 star servant, but her attack is just a little below average. Average. When it comes to her command cards, Jane has 3 hits on her quick card, 3 hits on her arts, 2 hits on her buster, and 4 hits on her extra card. She has an NP gain rate of 0.71% and a star rate of 8%. Jane's stats are strong for a 4 star servant with exceptionally high HP and good enough attack, an ideal stat spread for a semi support. Her noble phantasm gain is also incredibly high, while her star generating is above average. Taking a look at her skills, Jane's first skill is Sabotage Rank B. It reduces all enemies attack by 10% for 3 turns, and it also reduces their critical attack chance for 3 turns between 9 and 19% depending on level. Her second skill is Galaxy Messenger Rank EX. It reduces all enemies NP gauge by 1, increases her own attack between 10 and 20% depending on level, charges the party's NP gauge by 10%, and it has an 80% chance of increasing the party's attack for 3 turns between 10 and 20% depending on level. And finally her last skill is Show Me The Way Polar Star Rank B. This skill increases an ally's buff success rate for 3 turns between 20 and 40%. It also grants that ally between 20 and 40% additional crit damage for 3 turns when there are 10 or more crit stars. It gives them between 500 and 1500% star absorb when there are 20 crit stars. It grants them a 1 turn evasion when there are 30 crit stars, as well as invincibility pierce for 3 turns if there are 40 crit stars, and in addition if there are 50 crit stars it charges their NP gauge between 10 to 20%, all of these effects depending on level. For her passives, Jane has Magic Resistance C, which increases her debuff resist by 15%, Riding Rank A, which increases her quick heart effectiveness by 10%, Presence Concealment Rank A, which increases her star generating by 10%, and Independent Action Rank A+, which increases her crit damage by 11%. Moving on to her deck and Noble Phantasm, Calamity Jane has a Quick Arts deck with Quick Quick, Arts Arts Buster, and a Quick Noble Phantasm. Her Noble Phantasm is Space Dead Man's Hand. It's a single target quick attack that ignores evasion for one turn, and deals significant damage to a single enemy with between a 1200% and 2000% damage modifier depending on level, and it also reduces their defense and quick resist between 10 and 30% for two turns depending on overcharge. As for her Ascension Mat requirements, You'll be glad to hear that Calamity Jane, of course, requires a lot of bullets. For leveling, she's going to need 12 Void Dust, 24 Bullets, 11 Phoenix Plumes, and 6 Chaos Talons. Void Dust is farmable at Charlotte in America with a 64% drop rate. Bullets have a 65% drop rate at Yaga Smolensk in Lost Belt 1. Phoenix Plumes are best farmed at the Town Hall in Salem where they have a 35% drop rate. And Chaos Talons have a 20% drop rate at Des Moines in America. For her skill ascensions, Jane needs 36 Bullets, 24 Void Dust, 20 Eternal Ice, and 20 Arrowheads per skill. Eternal Ice can be farmed at Yaga Moscow in Lost Belt 1 with a 45% drop rate, and Arrowheads have a 40% drop rate at the God Sky Boulder Ruins in Lost Belt 4. Ishtar may be the star of the event, but you'd be wrong to sleep on this cosmic cowgirl. She may not have the punching power of her rate up counterpart, but Jane's cheerleader aesthetic is more than just eye candy. She's a semi support whose niche is cheering on the team DPS by showering them with buffs and utility. And stat wise, Jane is very well suited to the task. Her attack isn't anything to write home about, and it is by far her weakest stat line, but she makes up for it by having a huge HP pool, some very good star generating, and excellent NP gain. And that star generating and NP gain are especially important since a lot of Jane's utility is tied to crits and NP debuffs. 
Thankfully, Jane also benefits from a very good set of passives, including high ranking presence concealment and riding skills, to further boost her star output. And if there is one thing to know about Jane, it's that she's all about star power. Her third skill, Show Me The Way Polar Star, is her bread and butter, and its effectiveness depends entirely on the amount of stars that your team is able to generate. At the base level with no stars, this skill just increases an ally's buff success rate by 40%, but at 10 stars it increases crit damage by 40%, 30 stars provides a one turn evade, 40 stars gives invincibility pierce, and 50 stars adds a whole 20% NP charge. And all of these effects do stack, so in the best case scenario where Jane's team is able to generate 50 crit stars, the targeted ally will gain all of these buffs. The skill doesn't drain any stars either, so there isn't any cost for using it at all. Now while you may be tempted to save this skill until you have 50 stars lying around for all those bonus buffs, you shouldn't. For one thing, Polar Star has a criminally low 5 turn cooldown, which means that it can be activated multiple times in most battles, so you should be taking advantage of it while you can. And secondly, the the most important buffs, which are the crit damage and the star absorb, both come at only 20 stars which is a very easy number to hit. Being able to give any teammate a 40% buff to crit damage and enough star weight for even Avengers to crit with for a whole 3 turns is massive in its own right. The evasion, invincibility pierce, and NP charge are just kind of extra. Besides, Jane has other ways of providing the team with NP charge via her second skill, Galaxy Messenger. This skill charges the party's NP gauge by 10%, drains all enemies NP by 1, and buffs Jane's attack by 20% as well as having an 80% chance to buff the party's attack by 20%. NP Drain is a really good skill, but AoE NP Drain is even better, and it gives Jane good utility for boss fights, especially against multiple enemies. On top of that, party-wide NP charge is always helpful for pushing out NP chains as well as further accelerating Jane's own NP spam. The attack buff for Jane is also pretty decent, but unfortunately the charisma effect has a 1 in 5 chance of missing, which does hurt the consistency of the skill. But it is worth noting that Jane can remove the RNG from the skill if she targets herself with Polar Star. And finally, Jane's last skill, Sabotage, is her most unimpressive. It's an AoE attack and crit rate down debuff for all enemies. The attack down is only 10% so it's not particularly strong, and reducing crit rate is always somewhat situational. On the upside though, this does have a very high uptime, so in longer battles that 10% attack down does have an impact, especially when paired with other debuffs. Skill level priority for Jane is simple. Polar Star first because it's what her entire kit is based around, followed by Galaxy Messenger for more damage damage, and then sabotage last. For her pen skills, it's really only worth getting the NP charge to help her with her NP spam, followed by that extra card damage, but the anti-foreigner buff isn't all that helpful on Jane. Jane's Noble Phantasm is a single target quick nuke that ignores evasion and also lowers enemy quick resist and defense. Since the defense down and quick resist down debuffs activate first, this NP can actually be very damaging. But more importantly, with sufficient overcharge, the debuffs can greatly increase the DP of quick teams, since even at just 100% overcharge, this is basically a 20% buff to all quick damage for Jane's allies. Jane may not be able to beat out Emiya Alter or Tomoe for damage, but for a semi support, Jane's damage is surprisingly good, and she can easily take on a main DPS role when necessary. The fact that all of her buffs can also be used on herself gives her a very Nero Bride like playstyle, where she can sit back and support, or take the reins and dish out the damage. But by far, Jane's best use is as a quick crit support. Polar Star is a tremendously versatile skill that is very easy to activate. Targetable Star Absorb is immensely powerful in crit teams since a lot of crit servants lack star weight. And even with just 20 crit stars, Jane can pretty much turn any servant into a DPS machine with very high uptime damage. Beyond that though, Jane also has good utility in challenge quests due to her rare AoE NP drain and a plethora of debuffs. That being said though, Jane does have an issue with the majority of her usefulness being tied to one skill. So if Polar Star is on cooldown, or if she can't generate enough stars, then Jane can't really offer much. For a cheerleader, Jane is also surprisingly low on flexibility, only being viable in specific 
quick crit teams, and underwhelming everywhere else. And that's a niche where she does face competition from many other semi-supports like Lan Ling, Atlante, Chiron, and Santa Altera, all of whom are either easier to obtain or are better at the role. Now that isn't to say that Jane is a bad servant, but she does need very specific team comps to excel. In general, when using her as a crit support, it's best to pair her with quick servants, who are also capable of generating crit stars to power Polar Star, and who need star absorb or crit damage, like Dante's, Atlanta Alter, or Ushi. Dante's is an excellent NP spammer and star generator, but he lacks star absorb and crit damage, so Jane can help bolster his face card damage substantially. While both both Ushi and Yalter are very heavy hitters who can benefit from crit damage and also have star bomb effects on short cooldowns, meaning that they can guarantee the effects of Polar Star. If you would rather use Jane herself as a DPS, then you can pair her with other servants who further boost her crit damage or her quick damage like Wu, Alexander, or Osakabe Hime. All three provide good quick buffs with high uptime, Wu is going to be the best for maximizing NP damage, while Alex and Osakabe Hime are better crit supports due to their star generating. Jane's Bond CE is cheerleader of shooting stars. It increases her NP damage by 30% and it grants 20 crit stars when she first appears on the stage. This can can be useful for some one turn setups, mostly because the 20 stars is perfect for Polar Star. But as a support, Jane pretty much wants any craft essence that generates crit stars or increases her overcharge, like 2030, Mary's Sheep, Seaside Luxury, or Demonic Bodhisattva. As a DPS, go for any CE that gives Jane a straightforward buff to quick or crit damage, like Imaginary Around, Three Anglers, Gem Magecraft, or an army marches on its stomach. In the future, there are two very good CEs to be on the watch for, Therapeutic Spa which comes out very soon in January, and Looking Up at the Starry Sky, both of which are going to be free craft essences that generate crit stars every turn. The former is better for supporting, while the latter is better for DPS. Finally, for command codes, use anything that can buff crit damage, especially on crit cards, like Phantasmal Horse. Overall, Calamity Jane is a solid crit support with some good upside. Her Polar Star skill can single-handedly enable all kinds of crit servants, and it dramatically buffs your main attacker's damage in longer fights. Her debuffs, especially her NP drain, gives her a lot of good utility for boss fights, and she can even fill the role of DPS herself thanks to her strong NP and the ability to self-buff. However, her kit revolves entirely around her third skill, so without consistent star generating or the ability to activate the skill, she falls apart. She also has a lot of competition in her niche from other more versatile supports, some of whom are much easier to obtain. So with all of that said, Jane gets a B plus from me. If you have the proper servants to take advantage of with her, i.e. quick crit servants, she can be a game changer. And if you're lacking a good single target archer, she can be a solid damage dealer as well. But her use cases are a bit too niche, and while she is very good at her role, she is overshadowed by other crit supports who can work in more general purpose team comps. And those are my thoughts on Calamity Jane. She was actually one of those servants I was never really interested in, but when she came out in JP I absolutely fell in love with her unique gameplay and fun personality. So I wonder if she's going to be able to steal the show during the event for any of you guys. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing if you really enjoyed the video. Join the party over to Discord Discord, chill with us on Twitch, and follow us on Twitter. And I'll see you all in the next Servant Spotlight. So, Roni out. Later.